Since we're still a long way until the NFL season, why don't we take a look at all 32 starting quarterbacks and rank them from worst to best while dividing them into six different tiers. Rookies, liabilities, game managers, game changers, stars, and of course, the elite guys. So jumping right into the rookies category, at number 32, we have Bo Nix since he was taking the lowest out of all rookie quarterbacks projected to be starters. He has potential, but it's honestly hard to rank him before preseason even starts. At number 31 is going to be JJ McCarthy. This guy doesn't have outstanding lots of potential, but he could definitely be a solid player, especially with the weapons he has. But once again, very soon to rank him above his fellow draftees. Up next, we have Drake May. Their number 3 overall pick should be able to start right away or relatively early in the season. I believe he has the highest floor out of all rookies, although his potential isn't anything impressive. On to number 29, Jaden Daniels. He won the Heisman last year, so the commanders are getting a really solid guy on their center. It's hard to tell how good he'll be, but if he stays healthy, I think he could even be top 20 right away this season. And to cap off this tier is Caleb Williams. Most analysts have him already as a top 20 guy, but he hasn't played a single snap yet. I'm sure he'll make his way up the rankings, but as of right now, he is still an unproven guy. So now that we got the rookies out of the way, it's time to get into the liabilities. These guys are on the hot seat and they tend to hurt their team more often than they help them. Taking for example, Aiden O'Connell at number 27. He is definitely an unproven guy and this may be a tough spot for him, but he ain't a rookie no more. He may climb up some spots during the season, but being honest here, he is not the long-term solution for the Raiders. At number 26, we have Daniel Jones. He could even make the case as the worst starting quarterback out there, so things aren't looking too great for him. He showed some flashes of potential in the past, but right now, it seems like this is his very last season as a starter. Up next, we have Bryce Young. This guy has a lot of potential, but his situation is just terrible. So far, he has shown he has the capability to be a great QB, but until he actually develops into that guy, I cannot rank him any higher up. On to number 24 is Deshaun Watson. The biggest liability regarding him is his huge contract, but even leaving that aside, the Browns looked way better without him than they did with him. So honestly, that kind of explains why he is this low. Now, it's time to move on to some guys who will not make the game saving last second play, but can very well lead their team to victory. These are the game managers, of course, starting with Will Levis at number 23. I think his upside is enormous, but he just kind of lacks the experience and decision making. He can sometimes hurt his team, but some other times make top tier explosive plays, so he kind of stays in the middle as of right now. Up next, we have Anthony Richardson. If he plays as he did last year, I could definitely see him being a top 15 QB by the end of the season for sure. The potential is there, we just have to wait and see how he develops. In 21st place, Gina Smith. He had a relatively bad season last time around, so he isn't staying near the top anymore. However, with the squad this guy has, his job isn't that demanding and he can surely win the Seahawks the games they need to. Cracking up the top 20, Derek Carr. I think he is a pure definition of a game manager and that's actually not bad. He may not be a top tier guy, but he makes the plays he needs to make and will often get you down the field to get some good points. At number 19, Russell Wilson. During his golden era, he was definitely a magician, but last season he didn't really do much. With this Steelers roster, he has the potential to improve a little bit, but so far I think he's just stuck in the middle of the pack. Moving on is Baker Mayfield. He was not a good quarterback before Tampa, but oh boy, massive respect to this guy now. Since joining the Buccaneers, he's been a really solid quarterback and actually an important piece in this offense, which makes some people think he is maybe even more than a game manager. Which brings us to the next tier, the game changers. Although not stars, these guys can sometimes be that tiny difference that makes a team win rather than lose. Starting out at number 17, we have Tua Tagovailoa. His game style isn't anything special, but the talent he has is undeniable. Most people hate on him, but there's no denying that even though his receivers are amazing, he's still a big part of the Dolphins offense. Up next, Trevor Lawrence. I think he can be a clutch guy and when given the right weapons, he can produce big time. I do believe he's massively overpaid, but to be fair, he is definitely the type of quarterback you could build around and have a thriving offense. Now heading into the top 15, Kyler Murray. I think he's already established as a top 
quarterback, but injuries keep him from moving up. He should be on for a big season in 2024, but I won't rank him too high just yet. Now at number 14, Kirk Cousins. He had an insane start last season, but unfortunately went down with an injury. He has the potential to be a top 10 QB, but that will most certainly be determined by his ability to stay healthy and overcome this past injury. Up next, we have Aaron Rodgers. He could potentially be higher on this list due to his amazing career, but after missing the full 2023 season, I don't want to have loads of hope. The talent is there, but one thing's for sure, he is not getting any younger. On to 12th place, Jordan Love. He had an amazing first season as a starter, and I think he could be even better this upcoming season. He may as well be the Packers solution at quarterback and one of the next top tier guys in the league. Moving on, we have Jared Goff. He has been a really important piece for this Lions offense for quite a while now, and for me, it doesn't seem like he's stopping. I think he's one of the most underrated players out there, and he has been improving ever since he got to Detroit. And so, now it's time to get into the top 10 guys that completely change the way their team plays and can be difference maker in clutch moments. The first star on this list is Jalen Hurts. There's no denying he had a slow season last year, but the talent is still there. He's the main reason why the Eagles are still Super Bowl contenders, and I think he's still a top 10 quarterback as of right now. At number 9 is Brock Purdy. He has arguably the best supporting cast out there, which obviously helps a lot. But even with that, give this man some credit. His stats are simply astonishing, and he helps his team win and make the big plays whenever he needs to. Up next, Matthew Stafford. He's been somewhat on the radar recently, but take a look at his game and you'll see a superstar. Stafford is still one of the best quarterbacks out there, and even though he may be getting older, he's still capable of making some insane big time plays. Now on to 7th place, Dak Prescott. He had a really good year last time around, and people like to hate on him just because he's a cowboy. Statistically speaking, he's even a top 5 QB, but one thing's for sure, he does lack the clutchness needed to be really an elite guy. Moving on, we have CJ Stroud. If he continues playing like he did last season, I'm sure he'll climb up the standings even more. He sits at number 6 with just one year under his belt, but he most certainly has the talent to be one of the top playmakers in the NFL, all of which are found in the next tier. These guys are the best of the best as they display elite production and clutchness every single week. The first quarterback in this tier is Justin Herbert, of course. The lack of a competent supporting cast definitely hurts his case, but let's look past that. He's still one of the most talented players out there, and if he had more help, he could even be more dangerous than he already is. At number 4, we have Joe Burrow. He was the first overall pick for a reason. His raw talent is probably the best in the league, and his production isn't falling short at all. He does have a slight issue with staying healthy, but he's still one of the top guys out there. Cracking up the top 3 is Josh Allen. One could argue he has way too many turnovers, but this is honestly not a problem, considering how many touchdowns he scores. Allen is the heart and soul of this offense, so I think it's fair to rank him as a top 3 quarterback in the NFL. Moving up at number 2, we have Lamar Jackson. There's a lot of people that don't like his style of play and that think injuries are a really big concern with him, and although I kind of agree with that last part, he's the reigning MVP so we gotta give him some credit. And finally sitting in the first place is Patrick Mahomes. There's a reason he already won 3 Super Bowls within such a short time span. And no, it's not because he has a super team around him, but because he has that clutch gene within him. He's the best quarterback in the NFL, no doubt about it, and there's no denying every single defense just hate to play against him. But hey, let me know down in the comments who you think are the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.